Thanks for being here. Uh, it's a great day for Ohio State. Uh, Big Ten champions. We get to put uh, on the outright Big Ten champions. I almost brought a magic marker in there to, uh, you might see a little script, uh, 2000 and whatever it is. What is it, 14? Uh, right up there. So uh, just had a great team meeting with our players. Most improved team I've ever been around. Uh, I reminded them about our theory about you can go out and recruit you some good players and win you six, seven games. Uh, if you develop a little bit of discipline in the program about doing things right, about going to class, about lifting weights, about uh, uh, taking your trade serious, you can probably push it to eight, nine. If you're fortunate, maybe 10. But to start getting a little higher than that, you can't do it without incredible leadership. And uh, I, I thought that was uh, the case when I was a younger coach. Um, I know it now that I'm an older coach and uh, that this doesn't happen without the leadership demonstrated by uh, these guys that usually sit in this front row and are called seniors and, and uh, you know, I don't make a big deal of senior, this is a big deal. Mike Bennett was, uh, he's just finished his best three weeks as a Buckeye. I don't know how he played, I think he played pretty good, but I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about his development as a leader, a guy that I can count on, a guy that doesn't whine and moan and complain about stuff, and because that's kind of how we got through it in the old days, and that's not the case at all right now. We have very good leadership in this program uh, with these with these young with these guys right now, and uh, uh, that was resulted in uh, uh, a big time effort in the, in Annapolis to, and and be the Big Ten champions. So I'll answer your questions for you and, and move on. About an hour ago on TV, you said if somebody had told you in August that this might happen, you just said maybe not yet, next year. I don't think that that's kind of been an approach you've shared with us <laughs> until today. When did uh, when did that change? Just now, or when did you believe? No, that? it's it's uh, probably what you saw. You know, do you think uh, Darren Lee would perform like an All Big Ten outside linebacker? Which I, he's not quite there, but. but darn close, you know, to see the development of Eli Apple. You know, I, I thought he was a very average player. Not an average player, he's a pretty good player. Uh, two sophomore safeties that never started before. Uh, JT Barrett, you know, yeah, I thought he'd be okay. I didn't think he'd, you know, I'm hoping he gets that phone call to go to New York because he should. And then are you kidding me to say, by the way, uh, if you nudge me in August, say, by the way, that guy right there, the tall, tall kid from Glenville, he's going to lead your team to the Big Ten Championship. Uh, I, you know, of course not. So that's what I meant by that is, you know, that's a, is a, a long journey. So when did it start? To answer your question, when did I start? Um, I started seeing it, but I didn't believe it completely until the experience we had on Saturday night. What, uh, what did you think? Did you think the ceiling for the team changed maybe when Braxton went down? Did you have to change your expectation at all for what this team could accomplish this year at that point? No, when Brax was our quarterback, I was still worried. I didn't, you know, four new offensive linemen, uh, a brand new tailback. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know, and then uh, those issues on defense. So I thought I liked the young players. I thought, you know, once they grew up, this is going to be. You know, when those two young safeties, three actually with Cam Burrows, when uh, and you throw Eric Smith in there, when those kids grow up, I think they'll be outstanding safeties. Uh, they just grew up rather quickly. Could you describe how gratifying it is as a coach who understands where the program was three years ago, where it was even in August, to get to this point? Oh, understand. Can I explain how, the how goal gratifying? gratifying? I usually don't look at things like that. I just uh, uh, very appreciative and of our coaching staff because of the amount of time and effort. A lot of times, people see the finished product; they don't get to realize what went into that finished product. And that's when I, whenever I hear or see something, I always go back to say, my goodness, what amount of time and effort spent into this thing. And when one doesn't work, like it hasn't all worked here. You know, we lost a couple of players this year. When you, when you see something work, it also, my mind doesn't go to the failure. It goes to all the time and effort gone into that. So that's when I, when I see what happened and I see where we're at. I, what I reflect on is the time and effort of all the people involved from our strength staff, training staff, uh, and everybody involved. The emotion of the day you talked on ESPN about the fact that um, you didn't sleep much and just you didn't you had no advance notice this time. I'm Zero. Time. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, someone compared it to the BCS. It's completely different. Uh, I kept Gene. We actually came over to my house. We sat there and I kept looking. I said, "What do you got?" And he goes, "The commissioner doesn't even know." And I was like, "Come on, you know I didn't. Come on." And I thought he was going to wink or give me one of thumbs up like I've done in the past. And, oh, we don't know anything. 
you know, one of those, and it wasn't that at all. I didn't see it. I looked down for a second because I just, you know, get a little extra juice if it hit because I thought they'd at least go to a commercial break or something, and and it all just popped up and everybody went nuts in the house. Front row, Doc. Urban, did you see at any point last week what happened last night coming on? Did you anticipate that you guys were going to win? Not 59 nothing, but. I felt comfort. Wednesday after Wednesday's practice, and that's usually my judgment. Tuesdays are usually awful. Tuesdays are not good practices. They're hard. They're nasty. They're we give them the hardest looks because you know, especially in a short week, you're trying to, you know, it's not a bye week. You don't have time to. So you give them the hardest stuff on Tuesday, and that's usually the, you know, first down in normal situations, and it's it's rugged, and we're full padded practices, and a lot of times attitudes aren't the greatest because it's Tuesday, and I don't they don't need to be. Uh, Wednesday was. Uh, I started seeing some really interesting things and Mike Bennett, the leadership on defense, Cardell Jones execution on offense and an offensive line was playing with some confidence. I, I started to feel I don't I don't usually don't get too confident, but I thought we'd play well uh, on Saturday. And then is the and Dick, you guys came from further back than anybody in that top four. Is that sort of indicative of the improvement that you guys have shown? I since? think so. I think also that uh, you know, everybody got to watch. You know, you, you you watch it, and that was a that was probably a good performance that's been had in a while. Far left, Rusty. Urban, you said all year that we almost joked about it on Wednesday nights when I would say what you were ranked in the college football bowl, but you didn't really know much about the process. After the game last night, did you at least try to acquaint yourself with some of the larger questions that were about <coughs> your team and also TCU and Baylor and what that? Not really. Uh, you know, I know that both the coaches at uh, TCU's coach, Coach Patterson, one of my very good friends, and Coach Browse, I just met him. And um, I did watch, you know, I was watching, uh, who was it to play during the day? TCU, I think, was playing during the day. And, uh, you know, you catch yourself watching a little bit. But to say that I, like, pulled out the college football playoff criteria and all that, I had no idea. And even today, I looked at it a little bit after the fact. But, Prepared at all for the possibility that you might be disappointed? Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, someone asked me that earlier today, and you know that was, you know, how do I handle this team? Uh, do we have a team meeting today? Do I wait till tomorrow? Do I just leave recruiting, let them, let them get over it for a while? And those were going through my uh, coach Mick came over to my house too, and that was part of the reason. He, you know, obviously he's one of my great friends and uh, my right hand guy, um, but he was there for a reason too, in case it. You know, we had to start schedules, getting our schedules together immediately uh, after we found out what's happening. And one last quick question about you know the inner workings of the players and how you're dealing with them and everything. Are you more, and I, I know you never like these surprise questions, but are you more surprised by Cardell Jones <coughs> doing what he did in a week's time than anybody else might be? Oh, surprise, you're right. I don't use the word surprised. Uh, um, I guess I'll use it for the first time. I was a little surprised. Uh, he, he, what he did a really good job of, Cardell. We all know, uh, you know, the infamous stuff that when he first got here, and uh, he went to a, a prep school. Um, never really knew how to strain in the weight room and stuff like that. I went through some really hard times that really, without Ted Ginn's support and his support people back there, that this Ted uh, um, and his um, support group of people that really it's a very because sometimes support groups are awful they destroy people I hate to say that but the way I think we've heard of stories where that's my support group but they're they're idiots you got a real problem here his support group was awesome and it was all good every conversation was for the good not one time do we ever cross that line that we've had many meetings we're like what what is this you know it was all good so um, my point was that in that environment, I saw early in the game, you know, we did a good job managing the game with him, playing the sidelines a little bit. And then uh, he made a couple mistakes. The most notable one, the one where he threw down the middle of the field to Jalen. That ball should never been thrown. And then he made a miss, two misreads on a run play, and he came right over. And I saw in his look that there's no excuses except responsibility, and how do I fix that? And that's a sign of a quarterback. Far left, Matt. Um, since you've been here, you've expressed admiration to us about all your teams. You know, the first year, the senior class, last year, and this year, you, you mentioned it again, the most improved team you've been around. I'm just wondering, 
where that came from from this group? Is it the culture you've developed through the three years? Is it your coaching staff? Are you recruiting the right kids? Uh, where do you think it came from? That That's a great question. And it's, a, team it's a great team. question. It's a complicated one. If you, you know, and I, I made a comment last week, I'm not sure the media, I'd say it to our coaching staff all the time. College football programs are the most complex organizations, you know, that I'm aware of. I'm sure there's, you know, you can say, well, corporate America, this, and, you know, I don't, I don't buy it. I, I think, you know, when you talk about 18 to 22 year olds, what made that happen? You know, you see all the time where it doesn't happen. Uh, and, and everybody's intention is it for it to happen. And I think it's a, a combination of things. We spent an inordinate, inordinate amount of time on leadership training for our coaches in the offseason. Never done that before. And uh, we put them through a four-week training. I mean, you know, some people, that's why I'm glad we don't, we don't have selfish or people that be, are, are above and beyond, they went to class. Our coaching staff went to workshops on leadership training on how to develop their rooms. We call it power of the, power of the unit here. And um, I saw improvement. The linebackers were a very poor unit a year ago. They're one of our strongest now. Same coach, coaching better. And uh, um, phenomenal the way they've improved. So I think that's one reason is our unit leaders did a phenomenal job developing our units. And uh, uh, then we also put our, for two years now, we put our players through leadership training as well. And I think it's paying off. We've asked you a lot of questions over the years about the BCS and now coming to the playoff system and what you thought of it in the abstract. Standing here today, what do you think of the playoff system? Well, I think it's unfortunately still flawed. You know, I think it's in a problem. You know, we'll see how it continues to play out. You know, my biggest thing: how do what are we going to do with our players' families? You know, people are all worried about the playoff and who's going to play who. And I, I just had a team meeting here with a bunch of players. How's that? Uh, How's that mom and dad or mom and uncle or someone go see their kid play? They should. My kids are going to get on a bus and I imagine for free and go to the game and all that. You know, I'm really concerned about that. So, and I, I'm not sure they've addressed that. You know, I keep seeing all these schools get all this money. We're, you know, I'm going to meet with Gene and we're going to talk. I mean, whatever we're allowed to do, we're going to do. But that's my first thought. And I mean, most coaches maybe think, well, I think the process worked. Well, process worked. I want to see how our players' families are going to be able to afford two bowl games if they're fortunate enough to keep going. So they had a championship game and two bowl games. And universities and conferences are making a lot of money off of TV deals. How are we going to treat the families of the players? And for some reason, I still haven't heard much about it. I'm going to keep pushing it because I want to know. And I, I'm not sure who the answer is or who the, the person is going to have that answer. We have all of those people sat in that room and selected. I, I wonder if they have another room of people deciding on how to make sure that we treat the players the right way. Because they're, you talk about stress, they're going to be over the holidays. Watch what happens here in the next month. And I'm sure, I know some of my colleagues that I've spoken, what are they going to do about the players? So. You, this is, in any other year of college football, history of college football, this team, this good team that's improved so much, wouldn't have a chance to play for right. a national championship. Right. Knowing you know your team, <coughs> The idea that this team has a shot, do you, how do you feel about that, that a team like this? I think that's a positive of the playoff, you know, where you, it's more inclusion. There's four teams. Uh, if we can get the wear and tear of the players figured out and the, um, the investment and sacrifice at the families, I, I think it's probably a good deal. Um, but once again, I, inclusion to me goes behind how you're treating the players and their families. And I think that needs to be addressed immediately. And I'm anxiously, you know, going to find out. And in your, with the history you have, how would you describe when your teams play Nick Saban's teams? What's it like out there? Oh, it's a, it's a tough one. Uh, we've had, uh, I'm not sure how many times he played, I think two or three times. Two for the championship game. And those were the, oh, I remember every snap there. Uh, 08 was uh, one of the best football games of all time. 09, they, they beat us and beat us soundly, and we weren't we didn't play very well. Um, so, you know, I, I think we're we're a building program, they're an established program, and our players we have to we have to be on point to beat this team. I mean, we're I know exactly people said I know exactly what I'm going to see when I flip on the film. 
a bunch of great football. I know who they recruit. I know the way they coach. They don't have much transition in coaching staff. A little bit different dynamic now on offense, I think, with Lane Kiffin there, who's opened it up a little bit. But they, they were, you know, I keep hearing that. I said I was there when Julio Jones was there now, and they, they flipped it around there too. So I know exactly what we're going to see. Excellent special teams, and we have to be on point. And last question, Tim. Yeah, just a couple. Uh, number one, what did you learn, like like Doug Station might go, the, the process is, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Do you feel good about that aspect of how this committee dealt, especially like with you guys? I mean, after Virginia Tech. I think so. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I think so. And um, I can't give you much more than I, I mean, I, I think, you know, it's how a team finishes because that's why you coach, that's how you train. What, you know, I think something was, we got to make sure and I shared this with some people, is, you know, that whole thing about the head-to-head -head competition. And I think some of those things need to be ironed out because, you know, I can only imagine if someone beat a team and when it got in there. And I, and I don't know enough about that, but I think there's a lot of things to be ironed out. Uh, but there's no question that all this should be on how you finish this season. And the other thing, this time a year ago, we were asking questions. Uh, everyone was nationally was asking questions about y'all's defense. You couldn't stop anybody throwing the ball, you know. Yeah. To have that kind of performance in that kind of setting the other, you know, last night, what what can you say about your defense and Chris Ash and, and Luke Fickle and how this thing? I, I was so happy for Luke. You know, I, I, I love Luke. I, he's a Buckeye. He's a great family man. He's a guy that I have a lot of respect for. He's a guy that uh, we have hard conversations about. Um, you know, he was in a very interesting situation here before I got here and had, you know, he had no reason to be as loyal as he has been to me. Um, we were not, we were abysmal in pass defense a year ago. So we blew it all completely up. And that's a credit to uh, be able to bring in a guy of the quality of Chris Ash, who's a fine coach, and left a coordinator role to be a co coordinator here without any hesitation and without any hesitation on Luke Fickle's spot about, well, who's calling, who's going. We don't have that. Like on offense right now, we have two coordinators. We have Warner and uh, Tom Herman and myself. I mean, we're. You know, it's not one guy calling plays. So that's not the way we do business. You know, some places that's maybe how we do it. We script each play. Everybody's involved in game planning. That's the only way I'm going to have it. I don't want that dictator in there. That's not the way we do business. Same thing on defense. The minute I see that, we got to make a change. You know, the best the best I've ever been around is, and that's why I think we're doing so well on defense now. Is a bunch of good four good coaches in that room, and obviously the, the players are being developed. You know, 2012, at the end of the year, finally, you said y'all had a defense. You think y'all could play for it all. Remember uh, when Zach Board came along? And, and that, that's that? what you told us. Yeah. yeah. I was probably I'm not paraphrasing, but you said y'all. I should... probably wasn't telling you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was when y'all couldn't go. Yes. But, but do you feel that way now about this team and especially about this defense that it can compete? Yesterday helped. You know, I had my reservations during the year like everybody did when it was about stopping the run, you know, because we really installed a backward approach, a back a back end first approach to pass uh, defense a little bit the way, you know, I know Coach Belichick and some of those, they work the back end first and then move forward. We've always been the front end first and then uh, coverage wise, we're, we've added a lot of coverage principles. And uh, after last week's performance, I feel like we're, we're still, we're still though too young to say, we're a finished product. We're not a finished product. There's too many young players out there that uh, the future is very bright, though. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.